Hey, what's up, BFL fam? I'm Carlos, and welcome back to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Today, my top 12 niche fragrances for fall 2019. Keep it right there. Brooklyn Fragrance Lover Thanks so much for tuning into BFL today. As always, I really do appreciate it and I hope you all had a wonderful day. Let's start today off by showing some BFL love and giving this video a big thumbs up. If the video reaches 500 likes, I will do a giveaway details at the end of the video. I like to start these top lists by saying that these aren't the top best niche or designer if I were doing a designer video. Best fragrances in the world. These are just the ones that I happen to own and I'm sharing with you. I'm sure if you did a list, you'd probably have maybe some of the ones that I'm including, but you probably have a bunch of others that I'm not including. Also, take into account that I'm going with things that I own and are in my collection. In usual BFL manner, I will do this as quickly as I can as to not take up too much of your time. All right, so I've got my top 12 stand here and... Uh, Let's do this. Top niche fragrances for fall 2019. At number 12, we have from the house of Tiziana Cedenzi. This one is called Midash. It was released in 2018. It's a rose oud fragrance. It's got a creamy side. It's got a little bit of spiciness and it's got vanilla, a perfect fragrance to warm you up in the cooler fall months. At number 11, this is from the house of Le Labo. This is Santal 33. I don't care what anyone says. I love this one. It wears great on my skin. Everyone loves it. I enjoy it. It has great longevity. And at number 11 from Le Labo, Santal 33. Coming in at number 10 from the House of Zoologist Perfumes, we have the recent release of Squid. Released this year, 2019. It was composed by Celine Barel. I was really a fan of this release. It's their first aquatic and it's really well done in my opinion. I think it's a nice fragrance for the change of weather because in the fall here in New York City, we have some days that are cold, some days that are hot. So this is a good interim fragrance from summer to fall and into the start of winter eventually. But this is an aquatic, a little bit, not entirely. It's got a little spice. It's got ambergris and it's got that really weird but definitely intriguing ink note. So at number 10 from the House of Zoologist Perfumes, we've got Squid. Moving on to number 9, it's a fragrance that I've reviewed here with Steven but is not officially out in the market yet. It's coming out next month in October, but get ready for By Killian's Rolling in Love. This is just an absolutely gorgeous floriental type of fragrance. It's got almond milk. It's creamy. It's just a really, really well done fragrance. Probably one of my favorite releases of 2019 on the niche world. Number nine by Killian's Rolling in Love. Moving on to number eight, a recent release from Gallagher Fragrances, perfumer Daniel Gallagher. We have Wicked Good, Wicked Good in the adorably cute new 30 mil bottle that he's just introduced. This one has chocolate, Madagascar vanilla, and tonka bean. It's a boozy gourmand. It's chocolatey. It's creamy. It's, did I just say that? Well, it's a really, really nice gourmand that's going to wear just great in the cooler months. Wicked Good by Gallagher Fragrances at number eight. Moving on to number seven. From the house of Frederick Mal, we have... Dries van Noten par Frederik Mal. This is a fragrance that was released in 2013. It was composed by Bruno Jovanovic. He's done a lot of fragrances. You might know him from the recent Hugo Boss, The Scent, Private Accord. He did that one and many others. But this one here is a really nice spicy and creamy sandalwood. Perfect for the fall. We have the recent release from Parfum de Mali. This one is Kalan. It's been making quite the rounds in Fracom. 
I personally love it. It's a great spicy fragrance that has that burnt tonka accord, which reminds certain people of Baccarat Rouge 540, but to me, there's just a slight tinge of that fragrance in the far dry down of this. Number six, Parfum de Molly's Galan. At number five, from the house of Mask Milano, released in 2013, this is Tango. It was composed by Cecile Zorokian. Is the bottle looking straight? Yes, it is, because sometimes I don't put the bottles correctly. Somebody called me out on that recently. But yes, the wonderful Tango from Mask Milano by Cecile Zorokian. This is a really wonderful spicy amber. It's a warm fragrance. It's a little exotic and it's a great, great fragrance for the colder months at number five from the House of Mask Milano, Tango. Moving on to number four. This one people seem to think it's for summer because it's called Beach Hut Man. But to be perfectly honest with you, this one is just way too strong for me to rock it in the summer. If I were to make a list of the, I do 12s, right? So my top 12 beast mode fragrances, this would definitely be on that list and down in the top five for sure. This is a great fragrance. It's a minty fougere, very masculine and very long lasting. Number four, Amouage Beach Hut Man. Moving on to number three, a fragrance that I really love and I haven't spoke about, well, I've spoken about it, but I've never reviewed it or used it on a top list for some reason. Well, we're fixing that this year. Number three goes to Tower Perfumes, Lair du Desert Marocain. I love this one. It's definitely one of my all-time favorites, easily. This is one of the first niche fragrances that I experienced, and it really holds a special place in my heart. I think this is one of Andy's best. It's got amber. It's evocative of sleeping in the desert with your window open and the night breeze blowing in the dry air. It's a great fragrance that should be experienced at least once, even if it's not your particular taste, but I think that this one is a classic and I love it. Number three, Lair du Desert Marocain. And number two, from the house of Sergeoff. We all love Sergeoff, don't we? This is Richwood. This was released in 2010 and it is one of my absolutely most favorite sandalwood patchouli fragrances. It's very masculine, a bit linear, but it's definitely special. It makes heads turn, and this is a great, great fragrance from the house, and one that I would never be without, if I can help it, that is. And number one, dun da da da. Hey, better drum roll on this video than the designer list, hey? <laughs> All right, numero uno, another Cecile Zorokin creation. This is from the house of Nishane Istanbul. This one's called Ani. I recently reviewed it with Steven, and as you saw on that video, I kind of lost my mind a little bit, eyes rolling back in the head. This is a masterpiece in my opinion. I just love this one. Cardamom, vanilla, benzoin, Turkish rose, black currant. You couldn't ask for anything more beautiful than this. This is a great fragrance, and I'm happy to have it be my number one on my 2019 niche fragrances list here at BFL. Well, my friends, that's my top 12 niche fragrances for fall 2019, short and sweet like I always do. The giveaway that I spoke about at the beginning of the video is a five milliliter can of three of your choices of anything on this table, one lucky subscriber, this can be worldwide. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, like this video, then leave one comment down below with what you enjoyed most about this video today. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. If you have been a subscriber, click on the bell icon to miss notifications on the reviews, new content giveaways, and all the fragrance fun always happening right here at BFL. Take care, stay blessed, and I will see you at the next video. Hey, what's going on, BFL fan? I'm Carlos, and welcome back, fan. Hey, what's up, BFL fan? I'm Carlos, and welcome back to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Today, my top 12 niche fragrances for fall.
Thanks so much for tuning in to BFL today as always. I really do appreciate it and hope you all had a fantastic day. And uh, at number 11 from Le Labo, Oud 33. No. <laughs> and at number 11 from Le Labo. I love his work, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. One of my first niche fragrances when I first started getting it. It was one of my first niche fragrances when I started getting into niche and it's definitely evocative of the desert sand and the wind blowing through wherever you're staying. Is it a tent or a hut? What, what do they have in the desert? I don't know. I've never been in the desert. But if I were to be in the desert, I'm sure that... Shut up. <laughs>